Good morning, coming to you live from Baston Union Church. There's not many of us here, but the Spirit is here with us, also there with you. So we welcome you to our live stream this morning. Maybe some of you this afternoon will uh, see it on YouTube after it's loaded. Um, if you have trouble with it buffering during the service this morning, then you might do the YouTube later. We will be having communion during the service this morning. We pray that, uh, that you received your communion pack. Um, if you have time and you, you didn't get it yesterday, a little bit late getting some of them delivered to the mailboxes and things, uh, you can maybe watch the YouTube portion later uh, with your family and have communion together with them if you don't have your packs for this morning. Uh, the only service we'll be having this week, as far as we know right now, Wednesday night we do have prayer meeting. We've been having four or five a week, uh, so we're still in compliance with the less than 10. And we give plenty of space and, and all those things that we know to do. So if you want to come out Wednesday night at 6 for prayer meeting, you're welcome. Uh, the long-range planning committee and board meetings scheduled for next Sunday will be canceled. A board packet has been prepared for the board members and will be mailed out this coming week. The Faithful Women's Conference is postponed but not canceled. When we get back together again, we'll set a date and begin from there. So thank you for your building fund giving. March total, 9,050. April month to date, 3,426 so far. So thank you for your giving. You continue to give. Uh, thank you for sending your offerings in, for bringing them by the church, uh, just however you saw fit to continue to, 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 to give. We thank you for that. Thank you for giving to others and doing special things for folks uh, during this time. So we thank you for that. We want to look to our birthdays. Today is Addison Hodges' birthday. So happy birthday, Addison. Jean Moore tomorrow. Uh, Shirley Cox Thursday. And Allison Hull on Friday. So those are the birthdays that we have for this week. And we want to sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. So as the coronavirus pandemic continues in our country, many are having a difficult time staying at home and in an isolated state. Some enjoy the staying at home and working. Others would do better in their office or at their jobs there. I've enjoyed both worlds coming to the church and also being able to work some at home but I miss visiting and I miss going to the hospital. Well, of course, a lot of the hospital surgery and things are being postponed or delayed, so not a lot of that going on. Uh, let me thank you to our first responders, to folks that work in the medical profession, uh, taking care of folks in nursing home and hospitals, the clinics, our clinic here in, in town, uh, those who take care of us on their average days, their, have, their jobs have become more complicated. So may the Lord bless and keep you. The nurses and doctors who are working in the larger cities where there are more cases in those hospitals and on the ships and all the different places that they are working, we continue to pray for you too. Um, this is all new to us. We've never seen anything like this in our lifetime. Uh, I have found myself being more aggravated than usual because of the distance, because of the pressure that's placed upon us, because of everything going on, or reverse of that, not going on. So keep on keeping on. The Lord is with us. He is always with us. He will forever be with us for eternity. So lean on the Lord today, church. Lean on Him tomorrow. And if there is not a tomorrow, if not, then praise the Lord. You will have made it those that have called upon him as their Lord and Savior. Mindy taught a good Sunday school class. We had a good uh, uh, time this morning at the cemetery. I think Ashley showed me that there have been 382 views of it. So uh, that's 10 times more than we usually have on, on a, a good morning at the sunrise service. So the Lord's using what we're doing, and uh, we're thankful for that. So let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity together in your name. Thank you for all the blessings of our life. 
Lord, thank you, Lord, for guiding and directing through this difficult time. Lord, as we open our service today, Lord, help us to know how to lean on you, Lord. Lord, many times we've become so independent. Father, we don't lean on you like we should. So, Lord, help us to learn to lean. Learning to lean, a wonderful chorus that we sing here sometimes. So, Father, help us in this time, Lord, to lean on you, to gain strength from you. Lord, to, to use what we know, Lord, to remain strong in you. Lord, to put on the whole armor of God that we can be able to face all that comes against us, the wiles of the devil. So, Father, this morning we lift our congregation to you. We lift those who are able to view us right now. Lord, those that will be able to view us a little bit later on today. And, Lord, those that might view us uh, and, and be shared, Lord, this service uh, next week or even after that. So, Father, today we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory and thanksgiving, Lord, for this time together today. Thank you for Edith, Lord, Brother Charlie, Linda, Lord Derek and Ashley as they come this morning to, to assist in the service, to be a part of, to worship you, Father. Lord, empty seats here this morning. Huh? Just like the tomb, it was empty also. Thank you for Ashley sending us that. Lord, it's on our sign outside. She posted something about that this morning. Lord, our church is empty. But so, praise the Lord, is the tomb. And Lord, because of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, we too know that we have life after death here upon this earth. Lord, that if we do live until we die, Lord, we will do that. But Lord, I was speaking of the fact that we, we might be raptured up, Lord. And if, if we live here until we die, Lord, and then our bodies will be uh, reconnected with our spirits someday. And Father, so then shall we ever be with you. And Lord, I look forward to the days. Look forward to the days that we have ahead with you, either here upon the earth, Lord, or in heaven for eternity. And I thank you. Thank you for our brothers and sisters. We lift them to you for their strength this morning and ask you, Lord, to guide and direct everything in their lives. And Lord, as you do that, may they lean upon, may they not lean upon their own understanding. May they not lean upon their own understanding. But in all of their ways, Lord, may they acknowledge you and you will direct their paths. And we thank you for that this morning. We give you praise. We give you glory today. In Jesus' name. It's in his name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Derek and Ashley will be monitoring our Facebook uh, account over the time of the service. If you have a prayer request, I know we've already gotten one this morning. So if you have other prayer requests, you want to send those as we uh, worship, then we will pray over those requests at the end of the service. Uh, Sister Ashley is going to come and sing for us right now. Good morning. We hope you enjoy this song. Um, the name of it is For What Earthly Reason. Um, thank God, not only did he die for us all, but I just think it's awesome to know that if it was just one, just me, he would have done the same thing that he's done for us all. So um, if you don't feel special, in God's eyes, in the Lord's eyes, you are special. And um, because he would have done it just for you, not in the amazing part of it all is he did it for us all. So thank you, Lord.
out there watching on the, on our Facebook page and uh, this is a time of the year to be thankful I guess every day is the day to be thankful but uh, we sometimes get complacent and we don't do the things that we should but I just want to we're going to first song we're going to sing is the one I always say we never sing it enough and it says scripture says you are great thou dost wondrous things thou art God alone Psalm 8610 how great thou art Consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. 
How great thou art! How great thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the tree. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then seek my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou I think that God his son not sparing sent him to die I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden sadly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin. <coughs> then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation, I take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great, <coughs> how great thou art. Next song is uh, written by Bill and Gloria, Gloria Gaither and William J. Gaither. Everybody calls him Bill, though, don't they? But this song tells you because Jesus came and died for us that we know, we know that we're going to go with him and see him one day. And the title of this song is Because He Lives. <clears throat> God 
gods and his son. They called him Jesus, he lived to kill, kill and forgive. He lived and died to buy my My Savior lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow. He called, he lives. All fear is gone because I know. worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But The calm assurance this child can face a certain day because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone, because I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day, Across the river, I'll find my son, no more in Difficult time with those. 
So if you want to be getting those ready, uh, have them red ready and go ahead and take your caps off for your cup. Um, I've already done that so that I would not make a mess. But my mess was made earlier, you just don't get to see that. So I've already cleaned that up. But, uh, so when Jesus actually instituted communion, he was having the Passover meal with his disciples. We've talked about that before. How that they had their supper, the Passover supper, uh, the, the, the wine and the bread was part of that, unleavened bread. Uh, the wafers that we have actually are unwavered wafers. Unwavered wafer, wafers this morning. Wafers. I'll get it spit out. And that's some kind of the part of the bread that Jesus and them would have had. Bread without leaven. Then, then the cup, and then the lamb, and the bitter herbs, and those different things of the Passover. But then, at the end of the supper, he, he took up bread. And I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is a New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Communion is a special part of our service each week. Thank you for Brother Ramsey, Lord, and others, Lord, that helped make this possible. For those to be delivered to the homes, Lord, and, and to the mailboxes, Lord, to uh, doorknobs, Lord, some were hung on. So the folks, Lord, that wanted to, to could participate, Lord, those that might be live streaming with us now, those that might later on in the afternoon, Lord, view it on YouTube or however they might view it. Lord, take communion with their family. Father, remember, remember your body that was shit broken for us. Your bones weren't broken, but Lord, you're surely your body was. It was beaten, it was pierced, placed a crown of thorns upon your head. You were beat around and smacked around. I heard my wife watched The Passion a little bit the other night. And Lord, I can remember a lot of the scenes, Lord, of how you were abused during your trial, during the time of carrying your cross to where you'd be crucified or how you were whipped again continuously beat upon your body was broken no bones but your blood was shed for us there upon Calvary it could have just took one drop and that would have been enough it could have been just for one as Ashley's song said this morning it could have just been for me it could have just been for someone else but it wasn't it was for everyone you freely gave your blood Lord, so that we might have life and that we might have eternal life with you and abundant life here. And we thank you this morning, Lord, for all of your blessings. Lord, forgive me of my sins, my thoughts, my shortcomings, Lord, and not pleasing to you. I pray other people will take this time, Lord, to confess their sins, their shortcomings, Lord, and to seek your forgiveness. Lord, as we thank you, as we praise you, as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sister Linda is coming to sing for us now. It's kind of different standing up here getting ready to sing on an Easter morning and there's no one here. Um, I miss all of you. I want you to know that. Um, whoever thought that we would be spending a morning like this not sitting in church, worshiping and praising their risen Savior. There's a song out there, it's a secular song, but it says the times they be a-changing. And it seems like we're in that time that it's changing. And I know this is hard on a lot of you who are used to getting out and going and seeing people and socializing. So uh, just hang in there, it'll pass. You know, we'll be, made, we'll be stronger for it. 
I'd like to send out a word of encouragement to my ladies in my Sunday school class and to thank Mindy. Um, you all remember to pray for your prayer sister. If you have time, drop her a note. Let her know you're thinking about her and that, you know, we'll be back together soon. So the song I'm going to sing this morning is, is a morning like this. And in John chapter 20, now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Ashley. Was it a morning like this when the sun still hid from Jerusalem and Mary rose from her bed to tend the Lord she thought was dead? Was it a morning like this when Mary walked down to Jerusalem to aim stood at the tomb, bears of news she would hear soon. Did the grass sing? Did the earth rejoice to feel you again? Over and over, like a trumpet underground, did the earth seem to pound? He is risen. Over and over, in a never-ending round, He is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Was it a morning like this, when Peter and John ran from Jerusalem? And as they raced toward the tomb, Beneath their feet was there a tomb. Did the grass sing? Did the earth rejoice to feel him again? Over and over, like a trumpet underground, did the earth pound to say, He is risen. Over and over, like an ever ending song, He is risen. His son. Alleluia, Alleluia. Over and over, like a trumpet underground, did the earth seem to pound? He is risen. Over and over, in a never ending song, He is risen. Alleluia, Alleluia. Was it a morning like this when my Lord looked out on Jerusalem? He is risen, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, Ashley and Linda, for that this morning. Um, you'll see uh, Linda and I didn't talk about what scriptures she might will read. Uh, didn't know that she was going to sing that song. Didn't know she was going to read that scripture. Didn't quite know that Ashley was going to sing that song. I knew it was getting ready to be sung, but I didn't know it would be sung today. So the Lord has divinely put all this together um, because our scripture reading this morning comes from John chapter 20, which is also, we're going to start at verse 1. But before we do that, we're going to make our declaration, and it's found in Matthew uh, chapter 28, verse 5 and 6. So I'm going to read a few words of the declaration, and then those that are here with me, you can repeat them, and then you that are at home can also repeat them for me. So Matthew 28, 5 through 6, and it says, verse 5, And the angel answered, and said unto the women, Fear not ye, 
For I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And that is our declaration for today. That is our declaration of faith. No matter uh, what twist or turns that we put on it, uh, the main thing is that Jesus is our Savior. If we believe that, He is our Savior. It is up to us to believe that, to accept that, and, and to understand that His resurrection, uh, as Mindy taught this morning, it was so good, she was talking about the first fruits. He is the first resurrection, but He isn't the last. I don't know who will be the last one, last person resurrected, but Jesus is the first fruits, and there will be many after Him to be resurrected. We thank the Lord for that. Uh, we find our scripture reading this morning in John chapter 20, uh, verse 1 through 9 is where we will start. John chapter 20, verses 1 through 9. The first day of the week come Mary Magdalene early, even as it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and saith, the stone taken, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. When she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and with the other disciple, and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulcher. And he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths laying, yet, he, yet he went not in. Verse 6, then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and seeth the linen cloths lie. And the napkin which was about his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulchre and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, as it find, finds lodging in our heart, Lord, help me to rightly divide your word. As we prayed that for Mindy this morning, she did a wonderful job. We thank you. Thank you for the songs that have been sung to give you praise, to give you glory on this Easter Sunday morning. Our church is empty other than the, the six or seven, eight of us that have been here this morning, Lord, at, diff, at different times to, to praise you, Lord, to honor you and to worship you. Lord, the men that came to pray, Lord, uh, Danny Ray came and had breakfast with us after after the sunrise service this morning. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you for those that have shared in this day. Thank you for the churches, Lord, that are some up the road, Lord, the Church of God having drive-in service right now, Lord, and, and other places, Lord, as they, as they worship you. We thank you. And, Lord, thank you for this day, for this time as we gather together, Lord, to, to spread forth your word. Lord, help me to, to uh, do and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. These things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So it was very early on the first day of the week, John writes, and Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb. When I opened the door this morning at my home, uh, 6.30-something, I don't know, to come down to the cemetery, the birds were just a singing and a chirping. You know, you miss that when winter's here and it's cold and fall starts and the birds leave, but when they come back and they were all singing this morning and, and they were happy and it was not cold, cold, it wasn't real warm, but it was cool and, and they were singing. It, it sort of took me back there just a little bit and, and remembering the tomb and how special a morning it would have been that Mary, and, and, and in Mark it talks about other women coming with her. Now, John doesn't speak of those here, but, but Mark does and even names a few of them that they prepared spices to anoint the Lord's body as was the custom of their time. But they also knew that there was a great stone that had been rolled in front of the tomb. And that was to keep anybody from stealing the body of Jesus. The Romans did that. They put a seal on the stone that, that no one uh, opened that unless they be a Roman. So, so no one could open the, the, the tomb uh, because of the size of the stone. And the women knew that and, and they were hesitant 
uh, as they went because they knew that they couldn't get into the tomb to anoint the body. But you know what? They went anyway. Hey, listen, that might be uh, lesson number one today. Sometimes even when things look possible, things are possible because with God, what? All things are possible. So even when things look possible, they kept impossible, they kept going. And they come to the tomb. Jesus was just a few days, he was a few days ago, he was crucified, and his body was taken to that borrowed tomb. And I read something this week interesting in Dr. Wearsby's commentary. I really like his commentary. I also like Dr. J. Vernon McGee, and I read both of them very often. Um, and in Dr. Wearsby com Dr. Wearsby's commentary, he he was writing about Joseph of Arimathea providing the new tomb. For Jesus, and I never thought about that because it says in the Bible that the tomb was very near the place of the executions uh, there at Calvary, Golgotha, the place of the school. Joseph was a man of means. He by no means was poor. Uh, he wouldn't have bought property for his personal tomb near the execution site of the criminal. Some feel that it's underneath in the rock there, in, the, in, that, in that rock ledge that is uh, of that area, that that tomb was there. And, and, and Dr. Wearsby speculates. Now, like I said, he speculates that Joseph, well, we know that he was a secret follower of Jesus, but he speculates that he understood what many didn't. He understood that Jesus was going to die. Jesus told them that. I, I read a scripture last night in, in my personal reading, and it said, you know, at the Passover, he said, in, in, in a few days, I'm going to be crucified, and I'm going to be resurrected. And they were there at Passover, and they still didn't realize it. Well, I guess they did after they went to the garden, and then, then Judas came and betrayed the Lord with a kiss. But this Joseph of Arimathea provided the tomb. And, and there again, Dr. Wearsby was speculating that it wasn't a tomb that, that he was going to use for his own personal use. He got it just for Jesus because he knew that Jesus didn't have a tomb. He didn't have a place for his body. Jesus' body was placed in that borrowed tomb. And that's good that it was borrowed because he only needed it for a few days. Amen. So let me add something to what I spoke about last week. I spoke about the hatred of the Jewish people being blamed for the death of Jesus. The Romans for murdering him and placing him on a cross. I finally concluded last week that we all place Jesus on the cross so we can all be blamed for the murder of Jesus Christ. But then I thought this week, I read something and it triggered my mind. And it really spoke to me this past week. Jesus was not murdered, and he was not killed. And you might be thinking, okay, the loony preacher's done, gone loony. Yes, Jesus was murdered. Yes, he was killed. Well, we can say that, and we can think that. that Jesus did pray that this cup would pass from him, but that if he had to drink it, that he would do whatever the will of his Father was. There is no recorded mention of Jesus fighting, there's no struggling. Surely if, if he fought the, the men to be placed on the cross, uh, it would have been recorded. Surely if he didn't want to die on the cross, those nails wouldn't have held him there as Brother Pete has prayed several times as the men have gathered to pray on Sunday mornings. Listen, exactly the opposite of that. You cannot be murdered. You cannot be killed when you are willing to die for the people. So no one murdered Jesus. No one killed Jesus because he willingly went to the cross for us. So back to the tomb. Mary and others have come to anoint his body and they fully expect him to be there even though he tried to tell his followers what was going to happen, what was going to be the future, that he was going to be crucified and then be resurrected. Either they weren't paying attention, they didn't believe what Jesus was telling them, or it was too much for them to comprehend. I kind of lead to the fact that maybe it was just too much for them to comprehend. Listen, because they lived with him, and they saw his miracles. 
they saw the widow's son raised from the dead. In a funeral procession, Jesus is stopped. Jesus stops the procession and gets the boy's hand and he raises from the dead. Lazarus, he told Lazarus to come from the tomb. Lazarus, they had to go unwrap him. They had to go free him of the grave clothes. Listen, the ten lepers that he touched. Well, yeah, he touched him. He healed them. The blind that he touched and healed. The lame that he touched and healed. The, the man that had the withered hand, the withered leg, he touched and healed them. And they were restored. Can you imagine watching that as it took place? And that hand coming back to life. The centurion soldier's servant healed. The little girl brought back to life. He was even made fun of when he told them that she was coming back to life. The ones that couldn't speak, how they could speak. Uh, the Booth brothers have a song about did you, the blind man seeing, the, 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 the dumb man speaking, and the lame man running and telling others about what Jesus had done. They had experienced these events, or at least had heard of them. Most had seen them and been with him, it says. And when they got to the tomb, guess what? Jesus wasn't there. It's empty like our church is, other than Edith and Linda, Derek and Ashley, Brother Charlie, Brother Danny Ray being here this morning, Harlan, Pete and Bob coming to pray. I still didn't get it. Mary Magdalene returns to the disciples and she says, they, this is what she told them. She says, they have taken the Lord and she doesn't know where they've put him. She thought someone had came and taken his body away. <laughs> As somebody who teaches and tells somebody the, the truth, can you imagine what Jesus was thinking when he was listening to her say that? They've taken him away and we don't know where, where he's at. So Peter and John. Now, don't you like how John refers to himself? <laughs> I like that. And the other disciple whom the Lord loves. And then the other disciple got to the tomb first. The other disciple who the Lord loves. Who the Lord loves. Well, listen, here's a news flash from my good man John. Jesus loves everybody the same, not just John. But there was even a discussion amongst his disciples which disciple would sit where in the kingdom. Listen, I don't care where I sit when I get to heaven. I ain't planning on doing much setting anyway. I don't do much setting when I'm down here, Brother Charlie, so I'm not planning on doing a whole lot up there. And I sure, surely don't think that I deserve being sitting on the right hand or left hand of Jesus. Flat under the gate, just a cabin in the corner. Uh, but the Bible says we're going to have mansions. So they run to the tomb, yeah, even though the, the disciple who the Lord loves got there first and find it is just as Mary told him. The grave coat clothes are laying, the napkin for the face folded, and placed where he was laying there on the tomb. It may have looked like the Lord came out through the clothes, and they just collapsed right in place. They stay for a while, the Bible says, and then return to their home. But Mary Magdalene didn't listen to verse 10. Then the disciples went away again into their own home. Verse 11, But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. So she lingered there at the tomb. And maybe she was trying to process what she was experiencing. Maybe she was still upset that the Lord's body had been taken away. Listen, if someone came and stole the Lord's body, they would have taken the linen cloths with them. Or at least unraveled them there because they would have been cumbersome to carry. It was as if Jesus had just came through them and they were laying as they would if he had just stepped out of them. It says the napkin that went over his face was folded and placed uh, separate from that. Listen, church, good things come to those who wait. Good things come to those who don't give up so easy. Good things happen when we tarry upon the Lord. Because listen, look what happened next. Verse 12, And seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus was laid. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. She still didn't get it. 
And when she had said thus, thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Listen, she supposing him to be the gardener and said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Verse 16, Jesus said unto her, Mary. It's like the prodigal son, and she came to herself. That's not what the Bible says. Jesus said, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto her, him, Rabbi, which is to say, Master. I read there were different words for Rabbi, Rabbi being the Most High, calling him Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God, and your God. Verse 18, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. I bet they thought she was crazy. I bet they thought she may have drank some of those spices that she was taking to anoint him and she was seeing things. But she knew. Well, she didn't know right offhand, I don't know why. If she had been with Jesus, she should have recognized him. Maybe her eyes were covered for a while. Maybe she couldn't recognize him until the moment that she did recognize him and call him Rabboni. And then she went and told the others about having seen the Lord. So do you know what just happened here? Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene first, a woman, before the men, before the disciples. Now listen, women weren't held in too high a regard in Jewish life. They were considered lower than their male counterparts. So I'm not sure why he didn't tell it to the men first. Well, yeah, I do. Because it didn't mention no men coming. It didn't mention that the men came to the tomb. It didn't mention that they brought spices to anoint the body of the Lord. All it says is there were their women that came. And there might be a reason why it was just the women, but, but and it might be this. I'm not sure, but listen to what Luke 8, 1 and 2 says. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, of out of whom went seven devils. There's another verse that talks about, I'm going to read that here in a minute, about those who have been forgiven much, love much. So listen, those who have been delivered from much, what? Love much. Mary Magdalene was possessed of devils, and seven went out of her when Jesus cast them out. Listen to this story about the woman who anointed Jesus with oil, Luke 7, 47. Therefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Listen, Mary Magdalene had a great love for the Lord because she had been healed and forgiven much. Her love for the Lord Jesus Christ was great. And she was rewarded for her great love by being the first person to see Jesus after his, okay, let me put it this way, the first recorded person to having seen Jesus uh, after his resurrection. Jesus was also telling his followers to not discount women. Who is recorded as coming to the tomb? The women only. No men. Where were the men? Where were the men at? Maybe that was the women's job to do the anointing. But where were the men? They knew this stone was huge. They knew this stone was large. Sin of the women, they weren't going to be able to do that. Where were the men? What about you today? Have you seen the risen Lord? Do you understand how important it is to believe and know that Jesus rose from the dead? We can live because He lives. We can have eternal life in heaven because Jesus was resurrected. At his resurrection, he won the battle over death. Hell and the grave, the Bible says. Death will forever be defeated 
for the believer. Death has no hold on the believer. We may all experience death, but we, the death that we will experience is a physical death, but not a spiritual death. Death isn't the end, but is the door to eternal life. J.K. has sang a song, and one of the lines of the lyrics said, Death ain't no big deal. Brother Jack, Jake Hess has since died, and he has found that out. Death ain't no big deal. It's not if you're saved. It will be your doom if you're not saved. That's why we have a celebration to remember the Lord's resurrection. It's not just an Easter thing. It is an everyday 24-7, 365 event. We can celebrate Jesus' death upon the cross that gave us salvation. We can celebrate his resurrection from the tomb that gives us a resurrection hope that we have in him, that we too, after our death, will be resurrected. So what's the questions today? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Do you know the Lord? Listen, he's soon coming. I don't know when it's going to be. I just know it's going to be. And I know that it is soon. I feel like we're living in the end of the time. And I feel like the Lord is going to return. Could be today. Could be before we get finished here. We could be gone. But if whichever way the Lord uh, chooses, He might take us home individually through death. Or He might call us home at the end in the rapture. So it is our duty. And it is... Um, the command of the Lord that we have to be ready, we have to be saved, and we have to be prepared to meet Him should He come or should He call us. So let's pray this morning. Do we have any prayer requests? Amen. Father, as we come to You this morning, we thank You. Thank You for this opportunity to share. Thank You, thank you Lord, for uh, uh, Lord to be here uh, in this place today. Lord, that... Um, Hmm. Lord, there is a young, unsaved lady suffering from anxiety and depression. And they want Ashley to stand in for her. And she's standing up here with me this morning. Lord, I thank you. Father, that you are able. Lord, if this young lady, this young person, young lady, it says, young, unsaved lady suffering depression and anxiety. Lord, I know these times make it even harder. So, Father, we ask you, Lord, to, to continue to call her. Lord, uh, maybe it is conviction that has become upon her. Lord, that that she would answer that call. Listen, if that's you, or for some, if you're like that person, or maybe you're a, a male and you, you're suffering because you know that the Lord, maybe you don't know. Listen, if, if you're uncomfortable listening to me speak this morning, if you're uncomfortable listening about the resurrection, then there's a reason. There's a reason why you're listening. There's a reason why you're uncomfortable. Listen, the Lord, the Holy Spirit is calling you, is beckoning you. Listen, won't you let him have control? Won't you release to him your life? Why don't you ask him to forgive you of your sins and to save you, to come into your life and be Lord of your life? Listen, you would pray a prayer like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins and save me. I believe you died on the cross to save me from my sins. I accept that this morning. Come into my life and and be Lord of my life. Forgive me. I've sinned. We've all sinned and fallen short of your glory, Father. So we thank you. Lord, if one person comes to know you as their Savior, if one person is drawn closer to you, if one person is strengthened because of you this morning, Father, we thank you. Lord, we lift Danny Ray's family to you this morning. Cody Blankenship and their family, a baby born two days ago, and they are in the hospital. Pray for him and his wife, his baby. Pray for the unsaved people in our families, in our churches, in our communities that are attached to us, Lord. Pray for the unspoken requests, Lord, many of those this morning. Hospital workers, grocery store workers, Lord, restaurant workers, people, Lord, who are out of work. Lord, and we thank you. We thank you for what you're going to do, Lord, for what you've already done. And Lord, for this day that we celebrate your resurrection, 
We give you praise. We give you honor today. These things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Father, there may be other folks here, here listening today, watching, or whenever they might get to hear us, Lord, at the service. Lord, that, that they too are suffering during this time. Lord, it is difficult to be away from your family and from your loved ones. So, Father, we thank you today for that. Lord, that you can give them strength. Lord, if they'll turn to you. Lord, if they'll seek you. Lord, every day. Lord, it's not just a one-deal shot thing, Lord. Um, if, we're, if we're dealing with our mind, Lord, the devil comes back and, and he beats us up and he wants us to do this and he wants us to do that. And, and we have to continue to rebuke him in your name. And, and it does say that if we rebuke the devil and he will flee from us. It doesn't say he'll immediately flee from us. But he'll flee from us. So Lord, help us to rebuke him in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to, to praise you and to thank you. And Lord, we give you honor today. Lord, for those that, that might be suffering anxiety or depression, Lord, even an older person, Lord, or middle-aged person, Lord, uh, all of that can affect us all. And we thank you. Lord, even a season in my life, Lord, you delivered me from it. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, touch the folks, Lord, that, that, that need a special blessing from you this morning. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Ashley, come on, we'll go down here. Brother Charlie, come play and pray with us. always my first thing is to grab somebody's hand and I'm sorry thank you thank you for Ashley coming this morning Lord anointing her with oil in your name to stand in for this young lady and Lord we just lift her to you Lord don't know her name don't know the situation but Lord ask you to work in her life Lord work in her mind work in her thinking Lord the depression the anxiety Lord that she has right now Father, in Jesus' name. But Father, if she's not saved, her main prayer right now, Lord, is that she would call upon you to be her Savior. Lord, and then all these prayers that we pray, Lord, then, then Lord, the prayers that she would be praying, Lord, you'll be hearing them because she's a child of yours. Lord, I don't want her to get saved so that her prayers would be heard. But once she is saved, Lord, her prayers will be taken directly to you, Father through our high priest, Jesus Christ. So as Ashley stands in for her today, for her salvation, for her anxiety and depression, Lord, grant it. Lord, heal her, touch her, and Lord, remove that from her. Lord, help her also to see her need for you. Father, there is nothing that she or a, a he, Lord, that might need to do. Lord, to get ready to be saved other than just to save it. The devil tells us that there's something else we got to do. There's nothing that we've got to do. What we've got to do, Father, is rely upon you and believe that you died upon the cross to save us from our sins. Accept that and ask you to come into our life. For if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Bible says we shall be saved. We pray that for this young lady, anyone else that might be hearing or listening or watching today, Lord, and we give you praise. Thank you for asking today. Bless her and her family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for uh, being with us this morning. Uh, looking forward to the glorious appearing of Jesus someday in the clouds. But we're also looking for glorious reappearing of the church in this building someday in the near future. We thank you. God bless you. Happy Resurrection Day.